What's up everyone, it's Caddy with MoneyVest. So in this video, we're gonna be breaking down, of course, the market sell-off that continues. We do have the NASDAQ selling off a little bit over 1%. Uh, the the, the S&P 500, of course, down a little bit over half a percent and the Dow Jones also dropping further with the ASML stock dropping over 7%. Semiconductor stocks in general were also down on the day with NVIDIA also dropping a little bit over 3% on the day as well so hope you all are doing great and as always make sure that you drop a like we've got lots to unpack jerome powell's hawkish comments from earlier this week kind of accelerating that sell-off even further so link's gonna be down below if you're interested in joining us and our community of course getting access to all the members only private videos there's over 50 of members only private videos including our very own money vest index and our shopping list so part two of that is going to be coming out later this week so this right here is a video number one that I posted. That's part one, my entire ETF playbook and when it's time to actually start buying. This is our MoneyVest index and I created this on my own using a combination of five different metrics that we look at and the results have been very, very positive, right? Over 90% probability for us to see markets higher one year later with an average gain of just over 30% if this index gives us a signal to basically dollar cost average and buy because it essentially shows us where the risk reward is the most favorable and right now this is what it looks like so every time we are in the green territory that's where the uh, risk reward ratios are the most favorable it's the best buying opportunity and when this ratio of course is in red that means we got to be super careful super cautious considering how overbought and overextended we are uh, for the markets on a technical basis and right now we are at closer to three we're looking for these levels at under 2.5 and 2 so again if you want to get access to this i'm going to be sending out the readings of this money vest index on a regular basis so that everyone can get a better idea on when is exactly that time to dollar cost average a little bit more aggressively and the risk rewards are absolutely optimal so again link's going to be down below we'd love to have you on board and if you have any questions whatsoever i'm happy to answer just feel free to message me or email me and i'll get back to you as soon as possible so S&P 500 and the NASDAQ close lower for a fourth straight day as NVIDIA shares slide. So stocks felt pressure in afternoon trading as artificial intelligence darling NVIDIA swung to losses. The mega cap tech stocks fell nearly 4%, joining the fellow big tech names, including Netflix, Meta, Apple, and Microsoft in the red. And tech was the worst performing S&P 500 sector, falling about 1.7%. Percent Investors are trimming some of their high flyers. This was Kevin Gordon, senior investment strategist at Charles Schwab. And I think investors are really starting to catch on to the fact that there are other parts of the market that are doing well. And that's why we're seeing a little bit of that rotation out of technology over to other parts of the market. And the overshadowed, the strong start to the new earnings season, which less, why less than 10% of S&P 500 listed companies have reported uh, so far, more than three out of every four have surpassed Wall Street expectations. So we are still coming in with a very strong earnings season, and yet the market continues to sell off. Long time ago, somebody told me about this mark about this about the market, and this is a fact. When markets fail to rally, even despite the best and the most bullish catalyst, there is a lot of bearish sentiment out there. If the markets fail to sell off despite the most bearish and, and bad news out there, that is a lot of bullish catalyst, bullish sentiment in the market. So basically, right now, what we're witnessing is if the markets fail to rally, despite some of the best news that we're getting in terms of earnings and economic growth, that is suggesting that there is fear, there is uncertainty, and there is a lot of bearish sentiment in the market with respect to taking profits off the table. Wednesday's performance come amid about a weak weakness that has marked reprieve from the strong gain seen in the first quarter of 2023. Uh, or actually, the first quarter of 2024 is and in 2023. So the Dow has slid more than 5% in April. S&P and Nasdaq have tumbled more than 4% as well. Uh, this is more of a cautionary market. And uh, I'm more cautious right now than I've ever been in the last five months. This was Larry really Chief Technical Strategist, Blue Chip Daily Trend Report as well. We also did have the 20 year bond auction. So the bid to cover ratio was 2.82 for, uh, for this metric and the yield of water was 4.818%. So the strong demand continues on the bond market bond auctions here. And Powell warns uh, that rates need to stay high, uh, which of course was a huge, huge turning point for the market this week because he moved more decisively towards a hawkish direction. Um, and this was unfriendly for equity markets, but markets got the message. And traders also monitored the tensions in the Middle East after Iran's launch of its drones on Israel. Um, and volatility, of course, hovering around 19, popping to the previous session. 
and uh, though the Dow ended its losing streak, the Dow uh, the down period has zapped much of its year-to-date gain, and that is much of a reversal considering its approach to 40,000 just, just weeks prior. So semiconductor stocks definitely struggling and selling off. We did have, of course, big tech also pulling back. Utilities somewhat did well because, again, this is a, a little bit of a rotation out of technology over to other parts of the market, and more specifically, consumer staples, defensives, and utilities doing somewhat better compared to other parts of the market. This is the last one week, and you can see how one week has been pretty brutal and pretty red across the board for the market. And of course, we do have utilities, basic materials, uh, consumer defenses, those are the three sectors that are doing somewhat well yesterday. Everything else is straight up down in the last one week. Of course, all 11 sectors are red on the S&P 500. Coffee prices, cocoa prices, natural gas, Nikkei, everything pushing higher with volatility, sugar and platinum pulling back a little bit. Bitcoin just over 61,600 and Ether just over $3,000 as well. So this is where we are on the S&P and uh, we are starting to see a pretty dramatic sell off below the 50 SMA. From its all-time highs, we are down a little bit over 4.6, almost 5%. Uh, it is possible that we come down to this SR1. That's the first support level, first support range for us to watch at 47, 4,800. Uh, considering how aggressively we are seeing some liquidation, some exiting from institutions as well, so from L3 Bank or Oscillator, suggesting for more and more exits from institutions. MACD has been selling off. RSI is coming down to some pretty oversold levels on the daily time frame. And all of these, it's a combination of these metrics that are part of the MoneyVest index, right? So MoneyVest index really helps us understand um, where the markets are most favorable versus unfavorable from a risk reward standpoint, right? Consider it as our very own fear greed index. But instead of telling you where the fear and the greed is, we tell you when it's the most favorable or unfavorable to dollar cost average and to buy into that market. So it's going to be a little bit more time. You need to be patient to allow the markets to come down. Here, nibbling at these levels is not an issue because we're already down almost 5% from all-time highs. A lot of individual stocks are down even more. So it's okay for us to nibble in little by little. But really, when it comes to dollar cost averaging in more aggressively, I think it's going to take some more time, some more potential selling pressure here for us to be more confident and for us to have that greater confidence uh, so that we can actually start buying back into this market and be a little bit more aggressive. So support level is going to stay up at 47, 4,800. We are seeing some accelerated uh, selling pressure here, according to the RSI MACD and of course the L3 Banker Oscillator. So that would be that support level to keep in mind, along with that 200 SMS in roughly at 46.68. NASDAQ also breaking down pretty aggressively, down a little bit over 1% yesterday. Lots of consolidation sideways. And a lot of the times we've already spoken about, you know, how the markets have been a little bit more on the downtrending channel here, just continues to find it weaker and weaker to push higher. Uh, and we weren't able to break out of these certain resistance levels. And the NASDAQ here also trading inside this downtrending channel, lower highs and lower lows. And of course, broke down even further below that 15,900 level that we discussed in our previous video as well. So essentially seeing a pretty substantial uh, resistance and breaking down support level is gonna stay put down at 15,600 now for the NASDAQ all the way down to this 200 SMA and this green rectangle sitting roughly at 14,560 for the NASDAQ as well. Now moving over to uh, volatility. So VIX on the other hand are trading at just over 18. So a little bit of that consolidation. So if you do see another spike beyond that 20, 25 levels, uh, then we're going to be watching closer to 30, 36. But first, 23 level is going to be an important one because if you do get a breakout of another 20% rally here on the volatility, the next target is going to be closer to this level right here at 23. And then we'll look forward to 30 and 35 levels on the VIX. But the first one's going to be 23 to watch out for on the volatility. Bitcoin continues to consolidate sideways. So we're seeing a lot of uh, consolidation here in and around those levels. Resistance is going to stay put at 72,000. And support level is going to stay put at $61,000, dollars for BTC. And the next support, really the important support inside this green rectangle, is going to be between forty-eight dollars and $51,000 for Bitcoin. For Ether, uh, almost at $3,000 right now. So it continues to sell off, getting rejected at that double top resistance, as we discussed. And support level is going to stay put right over here, sitting roughly at twenty-eight, twenty-nine hundred. And below that, if in case we get a breakdown even further, next support and the next area of demand is going to be closer to twenty-one hundred for Ether as well. So that is going to be that next target to watch for Ethereum. 
Uh, crude oil prices continue to come down. So we are seeing a bit of a pullback in crude, which is actually good news because inflation is uh, somewhat directly correlated to where oil prices go because that what affects energy and then transportation services and a lot of other areas within the CPI also get affected with how high or low crude oil prices are. But this right here is going to be that support roughly at $80, $81 per barrel for crude oil with a resistance and target up to $93, $94 a barrel for crude. Talking a little bit about the markets we already did, and now going over to Apple here, and Apple on the day selling off even further, down almost uh, 1% and coming down to 168. Uh, next support and next target is going to be in that S support level two, so that's the green rectangle sitting roughly in the 150s for Apple, and of course a resistance all the way up to 196, 197 for Apple here. Amazon, on the other hand, uh, also pulling back, not a surprise considering how strong this entire uptrend was. Uh, resistance is going to stay put at 188 and near term supports that are roughly at 179. Uh, we got that 50 SMA sitting roughly at 176 and a breakdown below this level could send us down to 159 or 160s for Amazon. One quick message that I want to share with everyone is that market selling off is never a bad thing. I know it needs to be reiterated and I need to bring this up again and again because oftentimes when the markets are selling off, a lot of people start to feel scared and a lot of people start to feel the fear of the market sell off and try to run away from this market or sell in panic and never never get back into the market. But my goal and my real objective here with this community, with our audience is to always help you understand that market selling off is always a good thing and markets going up is always a thing to be cautious about, to be alert. Not saying the market's going up is a bad thing because otherwise we won't make any profit. Markets going up is also a good thing, but we just need to be more objective and more real with ourselves because this entire sell-off happened in a span of what, one week? You go back two weeks. Two weeks ago when I was doing the videos, I still saw a lot of comments that this rally is gonna continue. Caddy, stop talking because you don't know what you're talking about. Markets are gonna keep going higher. We're seeing a very nice bull market. We're gonna get up to over 6,000 on the S&P. We're gonna get up to 6,500 on the S&P. Nobody's stopping this market. Market continues to disregard everything around it. It just keeps dripping higher and higher. There's no stopping this semiconductor stock rally. Like there was on and on this constant um, understanding or constant sort of pushing for this narrative. The markets are never gonna come back down. And that is where I'm, I come in. That's where I, as I feel like an objective analysis sort of comes in to help you understand that this is not the case. Market moves in cycles, and it is my job to remind you of that cycle and to, to kind of help you understand that now is the time to be cautious and be more alert. And when the markets are selling off, now is the time for us to be more aggressive, right? Because when the bull markets happen, a lot, a lot of the times I also get comments that, you know, good luck sitting out of this market, good luck waiting for prices to come down. And that's where, again, there's some clarification needed because we bought in October and November right? We bought in March of 23. We bought in October of 22. Like those were the serious buying opportunities in the market. So if you come over to our money vest index, I just want to quickly break something down. Uh, it's not like we just sit on our hands and do nothing. Most of the times we actually do take advantage of when the market represents that opportunity. And this is the green, this is the green, this again, if you go back further, there's, you're going to find more times when the markets gave us serious buying opportunities. And that's what it's all about. That's when we, you know, move into the market, deploy cash and are a lot more aggressive. This right here was back in October of 23. This right here was in March of 23. This was in June of 22 and October of 22. So these are the levels. This is what I'm really watching. So if you ever ask yourself, does Caddy even buy? Like is Caddy even investing? Well, I'm looking at this. This is what I'm looking at. And this is what's really guiding my decision-making into the market because you know, like I said, I back tested this. The results were incredible. And logically speaking as well, this gives me a very good level of confidence to dollar cost average in the market because logically speaking, it tells me that the risk reward is really, really good. If this index is trading at two or below two, it will give me a lot of confidence to start dollar cost averaging in the market. And that's exactly what I'm here to teach you is a lot of the times, in the markets, when they're going higher, there's not a lot to do. You can simply sit back and enjoy your gains. Majority of the money is made in majority of the money is made based on the decisions you make when we get that small window of market fear and panic selling and the markets are down significantly from all time highs. The decisions you make at that moment is what determines how well you do in the markets over the long term. 
because oftentimes it's really just nothing that we're doing. We're really just sitting on our sidelines, waiting for better and better opportunities and waiting for the prices to come to us. In the meantime, just enjoying the market rallies and enjoying for these uh, run-ups and of course sitting on our gains, that's it. So it really is about keeping as simple as possible, not over trading, not making too many decisions and just waiting for the right opportunities for where the risk reward is the most favorable. Just because this index is now down to let's say a two or 1.5, does that mean the markets can go any lower? No, it can obviously go lower, but the idea here is to understand the risk and the reward. It's really, really good when this is in green. It's really, really bad when it's in red. It's that simple. doesn't mean the markets can go higher or lower once we get to that level. So this is not a prediction, but it's really just optimizing your analysis and your understanding of risk and reward to its highest potential. So talking about Tesla here, and uh, Tesla also selling off down about 1%, still trading above that support of 150. So that is going to be the most important level to keep in mind for uh, for Tesla. So we'll continue to monitor that level and resistance is gonna be all the way up to 175, 176, along with that 50 simple moving average at $180. So the momentum has been very, very weak for Tesla. Nvidia also starting to break down a little bit, down almost 4%. So this right here is going to be that support level. Keep in mind, roughly in the 830s, along with that 50 SMA, in case we get a breakdown below this level for NVIDIA, unfortunately, the next support is going to be down in the 660s for NVIDIA moving forward. So that right there are going to be some levels to keep in mind. AMD here also breaking down pretty aggressively. The entire semiconductor sector, you'll notice, was down pretty substantially. SMH, ASML, LAM Research, AMAT, Micron, NVIDIA, Broadcom, list goes on and on. Everything was down anywhere between 1% and 7%. And AMD's next most important support is going to be sitting right over here in the 150s for the stock. So 150 is going to be that level to keep in mind, all the way down to that 200 SMA, uh, sitting roughly at around uh, $134 per share for advanced micro devices. Uh, talking about PayPal, and PayPal here also struggling a little bit, down about 27 basis points, but still outperforming the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. Uh, resistance is going to stay put at $65, so that right there is going to be that level to keep in mind, along with those moving averages of 50 and the 200 SMA. Also, keep in mind uh, that we do still have the Golden Cross for PayPal. So we'll continue to monitor if that has any type of validation for us and if you can see that reversal back higher for PayPal. But we do also have a double top resistance that we're not able to break out of, sitting roughly at $68 to $69 per share for, for PayPal. Talking about Visa and Visa here also selling off. So coming down a little bit, resistance is going to stay up at a 274 with the support level all the way down to 249 it's been selling off. Our side MACD has been coming down as well as the L3 Banker Oscillator. So it's nothing new. We are seeing a bit of a pullback after the strong rally that we saw for Visa earlier in the, in the, in, in, in the year. Talking a little bit about Meta platforms and Meta here also selling off down about 1%. Next support really is going to be down in the green rectangle over here. Sitting roughly in the 450s to 470s. And we're also starting to break down from that 50 simple moving average. So that is something to keep in mind for Meta. Lots of consolidation. The pattern does, again, look a little bit weak, similar to Netflix, also consolidating sideways. Resistance is going to stay put at 635. 50 SMA sitting roughly at $603. Support level is going to stay put down to 596. If you do get a breakdown below these levels, if, if Netflix, for example, breaks down below this, the next target is going to be here inside $536. And of course, a potential gap that Netflix may or may not need to fill. Google, on the other hand, consolidating sideways after a very strong rally. Resistance is going to stay put at 161. Uh, and again, we're seeing a lot of consolidation, massive support here for Google in the 150s at the moment. And Microsoft here also selling off below that 50 simple moving average. So that is a pretty key turning point in Microsoft's chart. And the next support is going to be down here inside this green rectangle, sitting roughly at 398, close to $400 per share for Microsoft as well. So that right there is going to be that next level to keep in mind for the company and resistance is going to stay put at roughly at $430 for Microsoft as well. And finally, talking a little bit about Enphase and Costco. So Enphase over here continues to pull back. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of that rebound at 1.4%. Support level is going to stay put roughly at $108 per share with the resistance all the way up to $138 for Enphase. Um, continues to trade below those moving averages. So there's a lot of weakness in end phase right now and support level is going to stay put roughly at around 108 109 dollars per share for end phase as well and talking about costco and costco here continues to consolidate as well so we're seeing a lot of consolidation for a lot of individual stocks and support level is going to stay put at 670 dollars for costco moving forward and resistance is going to stay put at 750 dollars per share 
So that's going to be it for today and the entire analysis. Hope you all enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Again, links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining and of course getting access to all the members-only private videos, including all of our trade alerts and trade ideas as well. Happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.